Yeah. What's going on, guys? Martin Money here. We're back with Vasil from the, the B Dance. The B Dance. Um, we are still in the same clothes. This is part two. <laughs> <laughs> we, we last the last episode we were discussing 1040s or individual tax returns, and we wanted to really uh, jump into another portion of accounting, which is the uh, 1120s or the corporate corporate tax returns. So, Vasil, do you want mind explain to us exactly what is an 1120s to start off? Yeah, so 1120s is is referred to as small a small corporate uh, tax uh, uh, small corporate entity, and it's limited to 100 members, mm. and all of them must be uh, American persons, and that's where a lot of people trip get tripped up, because they think they think the person must be a green card holder, mm. but that's not the case because as long as a person met substantial presence tests which is at least 187 days in the current year and you, you, you can use like one third of the days in the prior year and one sixth from the, from the year before then but anyway you go through a substantial presence test the gist of it is 187 days in the current year the, the person met substantial presence test so for the US tax purposes that person is, is going to be treated as an American person even if they're not a citizen even if they are not a citizen and a lot of people don't understand that I they, didn't know that yeah they think oh I don't have a green card I cannot have an S corporation no that's not true that's not the exact definition so so, so, this, so that's a caveat there but anyway up to 100 members and it's governed by uh, by by section by section subchapter S of the code so subchapter S of the code hence S corporation yeah. It's, it's one of the types of flow-through entities, along with part, things such as partnerships. The reason it's flow-through, because the income ultimately flows to the personal tax return through a Schedule K-1. Mm -hmm. And in this, kind, in this kind of corporation, it's, you, you, the, comp, the, the corporation has uh, uh, income and different deductions, so it's similar to what we were discussing for Schedule E. Mm -hmm. And the but the but then the but it's a separate form, so it's a separate form that you have to submit. So usually you submit eleven twenty S, then the the corporation issues Schedule K one, the information from K one appears in the personal tax return. Mm -hmm. The after the tax reform, after the tax reform the uh, we have what's called pass through pass through deduction of 20% so the as long as it is not is as, as long as it, as long as it's not a specified specified trade of business and even specified trade of businesses businesses can claim 20% deduction specified trade of businesses are businesses where where the professional skill or reputation is at the root of the business, such as lawyers, okay. architects, a doctor, doctors, sure. things like that. So there are some more uh, severe limitations there, but but it's still to a certain threshold, three hundred fifteen thousand or so threshold. We can still they can still claim twenty percent deduction. Where the the advantage of having the S corporation is that the business files a separate form so when the you need you, you apply that your corporation applies for for a loan then you can show your your 1120s separately you don't yeah. have to show your personal tax returns yeah so there is not as much commingling with the, with the personal stuff where uh, sometimes companies come to me and say i feel like i we overpay taxes and a lot, a lot of that goes back to the entity structures. So if, if, that, if that client could structure the management company and then the operated, the, then the, the one company, one company owns the LLC and op, uh, owns the real, the real estate and operates the real estate. Then he, then he creates a separate LLC for management purposes. And then there is an agreement between the management company and the operating company about the provision of services. Mm -hmm. And then the beauty of that structuring is that then both of the companies are passed through entities. 
So both of them can claim 20% deduction. So that's, that's, that's a way to maximize. Mm -hmm. So deduction. let me ask you this. Um, this goes for my flippers and my rental property owners of the Burr strategy. Uh, flippers are people that buy, fix, and sell. Right. Or yeah. people that buy, fix, and hold as rentals. Or people that just buy and rent it out. Mm -hmm. Typically, I recommend they buy, they buy and sell and flip under LLCs. It's the easiest structure or entity that uh, our attorneys for the bank uh, uh, run through when getting the financing done. However, based on your knowledge, what would you say is the right entity for a uh, fix and flipper, for example? Yeah, so LLC, uh, LLC is a starting point. Yeah. But then once you have an LLC, what you can do, you can elect this LLC. So if it's like one member LLC, then it's going to be a disregarded entity, which will be reportable on Schedule E of personal tax return. But then if it's, if it's, but then if it's, if it's, uh, uh, if it's, if it's two, two members, then it could be taxed as a partnership or the LLC could elect the corporate treatment. So one of the ways to do it, you form an LLC first, then you make an election for that LLC to be treated as a corporation. Mm -hmm. Then you make an election for that corporation to be treated as an S corporation. Mm -hmm. So then, so then for the for the legal purposes, it's still an LLC. It has all the benefits of an LLC. Oh, okay. But for tax purposes, you just made it into an S corporation, into a flow through entity. Mm. Once, uh, if it's a flow through entity, you can like take twenty percent qualified Passive. qualified business deduction, also known as pass through deduction. Okay. So when you do it like the S corporation route, in the S corporation route, the big benefit is that you don't have to pay so much payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. Because pay in the S corporation, you must pay your, you, uh, the shareholder must receive a reasonable salary, and only that piece on the reasonable salary will be taxed as a uh, will, will, will have will, will have payroll taxes. Then the other piece that is taken out as distribution, that part, that part is not subject to payroll taxes. It's 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 being taken out of the basis of the of the that corporation of what that owner has at stake. Mm -hmm. So you see that way like a big big saving there is the saving on the payroll taxes, which is seven point sixty five percent for the for the for the employee and seven point sixty five percent for the business. Okay. So so I would say and correct me if I'm wrong, for a fix and flipper, maybe a corporation would not be the right entity because primarily their business, they don't get payroll. They just get, I guess, distributions upon the sale of, of a property that they finished building. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, when we talk about corporation, when we talk about like C corporation, no, so C corporations, C corporations, uh, you used to have a very high tax rate, thirty five percent. After the tax reform, it it became twenty one percent. But C corporations, but C corporations are not the most effective vehicle for this kind of structuring. Mm -hmm. For this kind of structuring, S corporation, S corporation can make sense because it's still a flow through. So it's not. So it's not taxed at the entity level like a regular C corporation, but it's taxed only at the shareholder level on the personal tax return. Yeah, the way I would see it is, you know, typically each property that the uh, fix and flip buys is under a separate LLC. So let's say we're buying one to three Main Street in New York. So we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna create an LLC called One to Three Main Street LLC. We're gonna buy the property under that entity, and we're gonna do the repairs and sell the house, right? I would think, and this is my mindset, is have a corporation that is called Waldry Builders, example, 
And then, and then that corporation works with 123 Main Street. So when 123 Main Street sells, I guess Wadri Builders contracts uh, 123 Main Street or something. And then once that property sells, then they the money goes through 123 uh, Wadri Builders. How does that? How would that work? If we were to structure it that way, would that be the right? Yeah, so you Mindset? said, yeah, yeah, so, 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 so you said like Waldry Builders yeah. is the entity that will develop the property, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like Wal- Waldry, Waldry Builders is the one that, the one that develops the property, so that's the development company. And then, and then the, the one that owns a real estate is an operating entity. Yeah. So th- there will be an agreement in place between Waldry Builders and and the operating LSC about the provision of services mm-hmm. to uh, to the operating LSC. Mm-hmm. So once once the once the once the development project is is finished, mm-hmm. and then the value of the of the contract was transferred to the to the operating entity, mm-hmm. then then the operating company can uh, can dispose of the. Of the property asset. after uh, after the asset, yeah, that's sold. And then and then and then and then you deal with the all the capital, capital gain with the capital gain calculation and recognition, mm. on that on that on that end at at disposition, of the of the asset. So you said a, a key term which is capital gains. Let's first explain what that is and then talk about ways to, pay less tax on capital gains. Yeah, so in 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 taxation in taxation there are there are four basic elements. The the first element is 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 nature. Is is so is it uh, so nature is taxable or non taxable? Then we then, then then we talk about character. Character is it ordinary income or capital income? Then, then we talk about timing. It's like shifting things such as depreciation, and then we talk about jurisdiction. So in this scenario, we talk about the character of mm-hmm. income. Ordinary income is taxed at regular rates, whatever bracket the taxpayer is in. The capital gains are being taxed at preferential rates, which is like lower lower rates, which is like between fifteen. Fifteen to twenty percent, depending depending on the bracket. Mm-hmm. So, th- the the rule is you you cannot you cannot offset your capital losses against your active income. Mm-hmm. You can you can offset offset your your capital you 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 use the capital losses against your capital gains. So it's you you can you can deduct if you talk about like the losses you can talk about like the when we uh, when you talk about the selling selling the property and generating generating capital gains one of the vehicles that can be used is uh, section 1031 like kind exchange if you reinvest during a fairly quick period yeah. of time in 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 another property you you can bypass capital gains, or if you reinvest in the to capital zones property, that's another way to. What is capital zones property? Capital zones is uh, property located in the economically disadvantaged. Okay, like areas. A, a, a opportunity zones. Yes, in the okay. in the in the opportunity zones yeah. areas. So you find the area that listed listed, the whose tract is listed, in the register. Of dis disadvantaged and economically depressed areas that qualifies as the opportunity zone, and then when you invest into businesses, into businesses uh, in that kind of zone, mm-hmm. you you have you have mechanisms de- depending on how how long you hold the property there, you have a mechanism to e- eventually get out, either the, either paying lower rates. Or if you hold it long enough, even not paying capital gains on the yeah. appreciation. So, you mentioned 1031 exchange. Uh, a 1031 exchange is when you 
sell a property, you have capital gains from selling the property. Capital gains is basically the profit, right, from selling it, if it's not your ordinary business, right? Yes, yeah, so, so, you, so you have your basis, so you have your basis and you have your sales price. So basis, the way you calculate basis is your original purchase price minus any capital improvements minus depreciation. Mm. That's your ending basis. So even though you bought a house that you added value to, there's still depreciation? Yeah, you, you still must subtract depreciation for okay. your ending basis. Then when you, once you calculate your ending basis, that becomes the subject of your uh, sales calculation. Mm -hmm. So when you sell it at a sales price, you subtract your ending basis mm -hmm. equals, and that that's equals your capital gains. Yeah. So, but isn't a 1031 just kicking the can down the road? It's It's... It's considering trade-offs. It's considering trade-offs, because you, if if you if you think if you if you think that you 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 would rather you would rather than getting cash. You you would you would rather invest it in even in yet more lucrative investment. It it depends on the facts and circumstances. Mm. Yeah, because you could. Kick it down the road, buy another flip, flip it again, do another one, do another one. And then you maybe eventually you have some money lined up. You say, you know what? I'm not going to flip. I'm going to buy a rental property with this money. And then your money's stuck in a rental property. At that point, let's say you end up buying in cash because you built up enough monies through the capital gains. You buy a cash. That's where I come in. And then I pull some of that cash out of the entity which you bought, the property that you bought for cash. I'll give you a loan against the property, and now that loan is tax deductible. You cannot, you don't pay taxes on loans, right? You don't pay taxes on debt. So now you, that's, that's I think that would be a, the, the ideal strategy for the 1031. That's right. Yeah, so it's like, you do like facts and circumstances analysis, and it, in, in the cases where it makes sense, you know, can advise the client on 1031 yeah. exchange but, but 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 you're right you know in some cases in s some cases they 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 may want to if they if they are like very cash strapped scenarios and they cannot afford investing in something like that right away but they really need that cash you now it can necessitate can necessitate disposing of it yeah the, but you're still talking about the capital gain rate is preferential correct to, to ordinary to ordinary uh, income. income rates got it. 15 to 20 percent uh, right so does that end our topic on 1120s yeah so so that's like the idea here is uh, facts and circumstances analysis yeah so it's very important to analyze circumstances because as as uh, Waldry said, you know, like if you just want to flip the property, you may not want to be encumbered with the reasonable salary requirement, which is a part of the S corporation. You may want to keep it as an LLC. Mm -hmm. But then, but then, but then, if it's a longer range project, it may make sense to turn it into an S corporation. Mm -hmm. So it goes for the, it goes back to carefully thinking through different pieces, beginning from the end entity formation and, and creating the right setup as Waldry was talking about with development company, we have a breaking company, we can set up management company. How do we how do we get all those entity pieces correctly? Mm -hmm. And then then we talk about uh, developing it to the point that we can we can maximize the sale and then on the on the back end, how do we minimize the capital gains burden? Mm -hmm. So, one other entity that I've seen, or, or rather tax form, uh, aside from 1040s, 1120s, is a 1065. Can you elaborate on what is a 1065? Yeah, so 1065 is for partnerships. If you have like two, okay. two, two or more people, then, the, uh, the, then that's where a partnership kicks in. And then in that scenario, it's, it's similar to 1120S in that way that it's, it's a flow-through entity, which means that you have, you have a partnership-level tax return, which is good because you, you can show it separately for your lenders and for your investors. You don't have to show your personal intent for yeah. you. And then when, when, you, 
when you report your income and deductions on Form 1065, at the end it generates Schedule K-1 to its partners. Mm -hmm. And then each of the partners will report the income on the personal tax return on Schedule E. Mm -hmm. Because income from flow-throughs, such as S corporations, partnerships, is reportable on Schedule E. So that would be... That would be that would be the partnership structure. So if you buy some property and then you have some other LLC, so imagine one of your LLCs and and another LLC, uh, some of you from some of your partner um, want to purchase the property together. You buy ninety percent. This other LLC wants to purchase ten percent then going partnership route makes sense. Got it. So basically, in a 1065, it's almost the same thing as an 1120. The only difference is that there's there's a partnership for a 1065. Where they're in the 1120, yes, there are shareholders up to Correct. 100 for an S corp. Correct. How about a C corp? Does that, is that limited the amount of shareholders? And a C, 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 corp, C corp doesn't have limitations on the number like that. So, so okay. that's more of the caveat for the S corp, that yeah. 100 shareholder limitation. So the C corp is people like Google or or all these uh, open publicly traded companies would be C corps. And we 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 often see like we often see like uh, companies such as, such as insurance companies, you know that or you know or sometimes sometimes even professional companies choose PC, which is professional corporation, mm. because they decide they want to be, they want to be. They want to be a subject to that, to that uh, tax code flat flat rate, which okay. is like twenty one percent for the corporation. It became more advantageous to in to 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 have C corporations because it used to be thirty five percent. So pass through entities used to be much more popular. Well, after the tax reform, it changed from thirty five percent to twenty one percent. So now corporations became pretty attractive again. Mm. So for cases where you truly want to differentiate the business piece from the personal piece, then you would go with the corporate corporate route. Mm -hmm. is, is, is especially you know when you when you're thinking in terms about taking the company the IPO route, and you want to take it public, you know especially for the scenarios mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. shareholder protection becomes more important. Going a more formal C corporation mm -hmm. route makes more sense. So, guys, those are the main types of forms that and ways you can file your tax returns. There are 1040s, which are personal, 1120s, which are corporations, and then 1065, which are partnerships. And 1120s for S corporations. And 1120s for S corporations. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, are there any other uh, ways to file your taxes aside from those? For uh, forms, well, you also have trust in, trust in the states. Ooh, that's another rabbit hole, though. Right. So that's trust, another podcast yeah, right yeah, there. Yes. Yeah. So, so so trust in the states is form ten forty one. Ten forty one, and then there's a nonprofit, isn't there? Or like uh, a church? Uh, do they uh, file? Correct. Yeah. What is that and, one? Then 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 nonprofits like forms nine ninety. Nine ninety. But if it's a private foundation, it will be nine ninety PF. Oh my god. So goodness. you have like caveats within nonprofit world. So nine forty one is a uh, trust. Uh, ten 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 forty one. Ten forty one. So ten forty is for individual. Ten forty one is for trust. Trust and estates. Right. So I it's interesting. Uh, uh, my last podcast, I was sitting down with a trust and estate attorney. Right. And he was saying how he partners up with accountants to create the right structures for the entities for them to be able to do their whole trust and estate stuff. Uh, and I actually have a client right now who inherited a property mm -hmm. through a, a, a family member that passed away and they're having crazy issues mm -hmm. to the trust and estate because they have to transfer the property from a trust and estate to an entity like an LLC mm -hmm. in order to borrow money against it for them to do what they want to do. Yeah. Can you, can you, can you like, have you ever heard, had problems like that or? Yeah. So for, so, 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 for, so for, for, tr for, for trust, it's, it, it has, you know, extra layer of requirements. So you have, you have what's known as corpus, 
corpus is known as the body of the trust. And then, then you have something called a DNI, distributable net income. So, and you have like, and you have different types of trust. You have mm -hmm. revocable trust, like, revocable. E like e irrevocable trust. So it becomes very important to, to read the underlying legal instruments and see how spe specific requirements for this specific kind of trust. Mm -hmm. So once you know that, you know, that gives you the baseline how to go about restructuring, as, as you were mentioning. So, yeah. But unless you know the underlying legal document yeah. that governs that specific trust, no, it's hard to comment on the yeah. way to go about yeah. how to to get into the nitty gritty. You gotta peel back the layers of the onion. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, it's incredible the amount of uh, ways, forms, opportunities, the different loopholes and the different right. strategies that are available in, in in America. I mean, simply put, this country was made for capitalists. People that are, are entrepreneurial and people that want to get ahead in life. There are so many different ways for you to be able to uh, become successful and within your own right. Yeah, and, and Walter used the word loophole. Sometimes people have a distaste to the word loophole. Sure. So the technical term in, 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 in taxation is tax avoidance. So that sounds worse. <laughs> <laughs> Loopholes and avoiding taxes are no, no, worse. But, but, but then, but then I'll say, We're not encouraging anything legal here, by the way. <laughs> correct. So, so like, tax, tax avoidance is absolutely legal. That's a legal term. Yeah, so like, okay. so, so, so like tax evasion, you, you may be ah. thinking of tax evasion, that's when we're talking about criminal activity, guys like Al Capone <laughs> and all tax, that. Tax avoidance, avoidance. Is, tax avoidance is okay. Tax it's evasion. okay to avoid your taxes, guys. Yeah. You heard right. it here first. That's right. Just don't answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so, seriously so, so tax avoidance is like in the in 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 the in the vernacular, in the common talk will be loopholes. It's like uh, what is a loophole? Is it's like knowing the tax law well enough to advise of tax saving strategies, and one of one 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 of the judges said. There is, there is absolutely nothing in the law that requires people to pay more than they are supposed to pay. So the government actually encouraged people to be shrewd, to be wise in their planning and management of affairs and structuring them in such a way as to pay the least amount of tax. That's prudent business management practices. So tax avoidance means looking for the ways to minimize your tax burden. I really appreciate that because yeah. I've, I've heard some people being extremely angry and frustrated yeah. because there are conglomerate blue chip companies that avoid paying millions and billions of dollars in taxes and they get mad saying, why do I have to pay 40% tax when this multi-billion dollar, some trillion dollar companies now right. are avoiding taxes. But as, as uh, Vasil said here today, the government says avoid paying taxes. You should only pay for what you are uh, required to pay. Right. So if you read and, and hire the right professionals, you will yeah. find a way to avoid paying taxes. So don't cheap out on hiring the right prof professionals because if you cheap out on hiring the right professionals, you're you're gonna buy a fake Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah, you know it's okay. like it's, it's like the saying like be be a penny wise and a pound foolish. Mm. So you know it's like it's like asking myself. I'm going back to value. It's like yeah, if I pay, you, do I get the right value? If the savings are right, you no, know, it's people see val value. You know, it's yeah. not an issue. The payment. Yeah. It's not. But it's, it's uh, again. It goes back to, can we show our clients that? this is the value that we're, we're proposing. You know, oftentimes, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of dishonest people out there. So the reason why we like to put out these podcasts is so you can see that we're providing the right knowledge and sound information so you can see that we are those professionals that take our careers very seriously and our clients' monies and financial futures very seriously where we wouldn't recommend something that we wouldn't take ourselves within their 
uh, their situation. So yeah, that's see, really what's about. See, that's why we encourage you, if you work with any professional, make sure that you go and verify their license, that they have their license, that they verify verify their their reviews, ask ask for references. We encourage you to do your due diligence to make sure that you work with the right kind of professional for you. A beautiful thing is that uh, the America is, is when it comes to professionals, very transparent. There is a board, there is a website, there's a form, there's yeah. a database mm -hmm. of all the licensed individuals, CPAs, whether lawyers, you know, you're, you're a CPA yeah. or a lawyer or a financial guy or, or, or an insurance guy or, or a woman or whatever it is, there's always data out there where you can fact check, right, and get your references, as the seal has said. So guys, we encourage you to get your references, listen to the right people, study, not just take our knowledge and advice, but also do your own research. That's right. After you hear a real person, go talk to ChatGPT, okay? Yeah. And fact check what we're saying because this is all coming from prior knowledge and information that we're studying ourselves to educate you people. So you heard it here first at the Be Dance, baby. Studio, okay, <laughs> teaching ba teaching people how to dance with the bees, <laughs> and what else? Yeah, yeah. So we see, so so it's like the 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 reason is the dance because we dance or negotiate. Like in Spanish, business is negocio, which is negotiations. Yeah. We dance or negotiate with everybody. We negotiate with the customers, with the employees, with the uh, with the with the government. With the IRS. <laughs> yeah, like with the, with the IRS. So it's like the concept. We, we are dancing in order to find the right solution and we be like the be cross pollinate we getting the right professionals get the right teams in a hive to make sure we build a lot of value in that in that in that beehive 100 yeah. thank you Vasil. nice nice talking pleasure to you.